Thank you so much for coming out to Starbucks. How many of you are from the Bushwick area? <laughs> Brooklyn? No. Oh. Right. Wherever you're coming from, thank you so much for coming out here. And I hope it was like an easy commute and enjoy Bushwick. Sorry the weather is like crappy, but you know, there's a lot to do out here. You know, there's a lot of great restaurants and bars and this is a fantastic space. Um, I've lived here since 2001. I'm only a few blocks up and I've never ever done a gig in my own neighborhood. So what? this is really interesting stuff. I literally just walked two blocks over. I don't even have to call an Uber or anything. <laughs> so, but um, I'm here, I'm gonna introduce our first reader tonight. Um, before I read the official bio, I just have to say it is a pleasure to know that there's a whole new generation of like queer Latinx poets who are like fierce and rising and really out there fighting for our rights and and speaking our troops because we need to hear all our differences, all our universalities and and, and bring people together through the poetry. So give it up for Jimena Izquierda Ugas. Andina multimedia artist, curator, and educator born in Lima, Peru. Her work primarily touches on the imprint of intergenerational trauma within her own family in relationship to place and migration. She is the team programs coordinator at the Brooklyn Museum, the visual arts co-curator at Nat Group, as well as a founding member and co-curator of Sweeties, a gallery and platform dedicated to supporting and exhibiting artists of color, like myself. In addition, Izquierdo Ugas is the author of the self-published Standing in the Bathroom in the Dark, Thinking About Green, and El Mismo Pozo, The Same Well. Her work has appeared in Feelings, and her first chapbook is available tonight, and it's titled Estoy Tristeza, from No Dear Magazine and Small Anchor Press, um, and which was recently published. So please make sure to take photographs of her, get books, and have her sign them. But please give it up for Jimena. stained button-up shirts and jeans gyrated their bodies slowly to the clown's song. Así, así, con la mano de la colita Si no la mueve, la tiene tapadita This one's called Miami Swan Song and it's dedicated to Randy, who's the person I met one summer in Miami. Last night, my baby brother told me bedtime stories. Once upon a time, there was a boy that wasn't friends with his hands. That's it, he said. If you don't stop crying, you won't dream. Three more hours on this flight as I watch Florida vanish past the sea and into clouds. Each cloud has a family, and each family is moving in the most painful, slow sprint, all in a great migration. I could stay here forever on a plane that will never land. We could just drift hundreds of miles above this city, surrounded by the same people for eternity. The three Red Sox fans and the flatulent man behind me could become intimate friends. Maybe in time, we could explore the farthest reaches of the wingspan, the secret crevices of the cockpit. We could pamper ourselves with cocktail parties, dressed in each other's clothes. I could fall in love with a flight attendant. Her hair barely caresses her ears as she whispers the list of purchasable snacks into mine. You should see the ocean from here, complete stillness all around. The water turns steadily into sky. There is no separation. One. My 
uncle tells me that every country has a spirit. He says that I've lost the spirit of our country, that it is no longer in my features, my way of speaking, of breathing. In Pinco, we meet Teofila Silvestre. I am standing outside her adobe home, from where I can see the tallest snowy mountain lit faintly by every single constellation. And what has brought you here, Teofila, to this land of violent frost? I cannot sleep at night. She says in broken Spanish, estoy tristeza. Her cat has died, and a whitewash has sucked the blood dry of her pregnant guinea pig. We are driving to the place where my mother was born. My uncle has waited 25 years to return. 25 years since the only time it ever snowed in the town of Samangai, and he walked incredulous for miles. Every hill was draped in white. It was the first time he saw snow. We are 2,224 meters above sea level, yet just yesterday in Ankash, I could smell the ocean from my window. My uncle says that the roads are like the left veins of the country, amid which, amid which hundreds of people ceaselessly circulate and bring life. We drive through the town in which mercury from the nearby mine overflowed the streets like a river and made its way into the town's water. Now there is thirst. These hills are not just hills. These mountains are filled with gold. It was what drove white settlers here, deep in these mountain valleys. Two. Every morning, a band awakens the city, playing winos through the narrow streets. It is San Juan Bautista's festival, which means puro baile. I am in a large crowd, arm in arm with three girls I have just met, and the entire town is here dancing. Somewhere inside of this brightly colored, snuggled multitude, are all of my aunts going wildly to the chichas and wainos. Closer to the stage, I can spot Misho, the man with the green eyes, the one that glued the soles of my shoes back together. I am dancing with a 15-year-old boy, yet these palms are not his. These sandpaper hands don't belong to him. I ask for his name as I try to brush off the roughness of his hands. He tells me he tills the fields, picks potatoes, grinds corn. When no one is looking, I run to the highest slope of the tallest hill. I rub my face into the fertile soil of this mountain plateau, searching for the spirit, wanting nothing more but to have it again in my features, my way of speaking, of breathing. Down the road, a motorcycle taxi driver asked me if I would dance with him tonight. At that moment, the firework castle in the plaza goes off, abolishing every other sound in sight. It is a beautiful thing to run away from. self-portrait at 21. I am really good at missing the bus. I am often about to turn the corner where the bus stops and I can feel it, something in my chest like un presentimiento, like my father seeing a vision of his father knocking on the door of his house and turning the corner and knocking ice with him with his hands at the door. The bus speeds down the road oh. Sorry. <laughs> yes, the bus keeps on the road while I concentrate on the sound of my boots on the snow, like squeezing chuño in your hands. At the stop, I watch specks of white bouncing off the black umbrellas of three Dominicanas. When I think of umbrellas, I remember pushing a shopping cart in the Miami sun showers called Mommy and My Sister with $50 worth of groceries for the month. Sometimes, the only safe place is between your tacky, flowery bed sheets, como las de tu abuelita, with your lover. For my 21st birthday, 
Mommy gives me a bracelet with my name engraved in a little silver heart. It reminds me of the golden hoop earrings my best white friend got herself with her name splitting the circle, Tracy. And I wonder what it means to have your name incised into something. When I'm walking with my eyes on the floor beneath me, I can't tell if I'm seeing the snow or its shadow. On the first night of my birthday, I write my name onto the windshield of a parked car with my finger. High voltage transmission lines. When the blackout stopped, Gustavo wept each night in mourning. As children, the blackouts were a great scavenger hunt. The whole family sifted through years of newspaper cutouts of recipes and flower placemats for candles and rounded up all the candelabra in the house. Our hearts beat 10 times too fast at the smell of the wax dripping slowly onto a small ceramic plate in the bathroom. Soon, the blackouts ripened into routine. And if you were afraid of the dark, you held on tight to your mother's neck for consolation as everyone gathered around the living room and listened to each other for hours until sleep came. Today, I turn 24, which means it's been 24 years since Abimael Guzman was captured. 24 years since Fujimori <coughs> dissolved Congress and shut down all the media stations. 24 years since the university students of La Cantuta were assassinated. 24 years alive in a generation that is missing thousands. Those who could have been our parents forcibly sterilized. As we walk, we walk with all the children whose chance at life was stolen. It is very late years later, at your kitchen table, eating butter bread on your flower placemats, remembering when they stopped bombing the high voltage transmission lines. Monólogo de mi padre. Yo hablo ahora porque tal vez después ya no puedo hablar y no podría decirte estas cosas. Here means where your people are buried. One. But sometimes they are not buried. They are spread. They expand. They won't be kept in one place. Sometimes, at their way, la villana de la novela se aparece. Llena su boca con las galletas que untaste con mantequilla, una por una, para el alorio, y se enjuaga con el café. She's here just to say that she did good by your father, but you don't know her. You remember your father's words. No has visto toda la película. Sometimes the version of the movie you were given is easier. But you're grown now. You tread slowly. You breathe in and out. You take your time. No one taught you how to mourn. You didn't expect death. You breathe in and out. Two. You remember the last time you saw him awake. You're getting in the taxi again. Your mother is there. She is your mother, and he is your father, who you just walked away from, sick in his bed, unable to move without that shot of morphine. You want it to be easy. Que te resbale como mantequilla, says your mother, in the taxi, and it's true. 
You have not seen the whole movie, but you caught this last part. The scene where you and your mother visit your sick father on Christmas. Cut. No. The scene where a survivor confronts her rapist. Cut. No. The scene where your white chola mother confronts your black father. Cut. No. The scene where your mother sits at her sick cousin's bedside as he talks about a movie you have not seen in its entirety. Sometimes your people are sitting at their own burial, unwilling to leave, when there's too many debts to be paid. You want it to be easy. Que te resbale como mantequilla. You tread slowly. You breathe in and out. You take your time. Last words. If anything ever happens, I just want you to know this vase is made of Moran crystal. And this is your great grandfather's dictionary. Look, here's the book I have been writing. You know, I can always pray for you if you want me to.